All right. Thank you very much for coming. So I will basically briefly talk about the hottest trends in AI, right? So uh, I combined them into three subtopics uh, named generative models, end-to-end -end training, and transfer learning. So these are not totally separate from each other. In many applications, they are like entwined, right? Uh, but this will just give a short sort of crash course to the really, really recent, meaning that last six months or something, right? So super recent, uh, fancy stuff in AI. My name is Oğuzhan Gençoğlu. I'm from Top Data Science. Uh, we are a Helsinki-based startup. We are a, well, top data science company. So we provide uh, machine learning solutions to prominent problems in the world. Uh, my talk, talk will be slightly technical, not like machine learning conference level technical, but it won't be like elevator pitch, right? So that's how it is. Okay, this is our company. Uh, quickly what we do, we do stuff like, uh, for example, predicting prostate cancer using AI, better than humans, from biomedical images, stuff like that. This will be my outline. I'll first start with this uh, super hot topic called generative models. So AI that can generate stuff once you teach it, once you show examples and hopefully actually without, without showing uh, annotated examples. So one of the most fundamental thing of like intelligence is like once we learn something, hopefully we are able to create new instances of that new meaning that stuff that we haven't seen as observations right so this is like this is very fundamental so in the end in machine learning we have uh, roughly two okay more than two but roughly two sort of sub sub ways of training stuff one is supervised learning in which you give examples like ground through to the annotated examples to your machine learning system so that it learns from examples which most of the machine learning systems are now and the other one is unsupervised which we haven't solved it yet meaning that you you don't give actually annotated data but it sort of learns and which is very essential to reach any sort of human level intelligence because that's more or less how we learn things so uh, when when you have a baby you don't tell him or her one million times this is a cat this is not a cat this. so it 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 doesn't work like that right so sometimes sometimes almost unsupervised of course uh, unsupervised learning it's it's not a new thing uh, even before this deep learning stuff it's it's basically clustering but then uh, nowadays we are really working on it. So it started with autoencoders, uh, which is a s set of neural network architecture in which you basically learn compact representations of your data. Compact meaning that you don't lose much information, so it's more or less some compression, and you do this encoding decoding. But uh, there, I haven't really seen any practical use case of autoencoders in a like very recent high-end system. And there are other, of course, variations of it, like sparse and denoising autoencoders. People who are in machine learning field, they know what, what sort of these keywords are. In machine learning, we have lots of keywords like sparse, dense, uh, stacked, deep, shallow, and stuff like that. But I, will, I won't go into details. We can talk the details in the lunch uh, in the dinner right if you want but nowadays there's this thing called it started in 2014 with Ian Goodfellow he's a really cool researcher but it's been very hot at especially in the last one year it's called generative adversarial networks so it is it is such a neural network structure that there are actually uh, two sort of agents we call. First one just constantly tries to mimic the data set, right? 
and this this is unsupervised stuff so there's no labels so think of it like okay let's try to create an analogy with your friend you want to hit the big money you want to fake picasso pictures and sell it for millions right so this generator this is your friend he he constantly trains himself to paint like picasso stuff then you which is the discriminator tell is it like good enough or not so in the end he gets better in mimicking picasso stuff but you also get better uh, saying no actually this is this is not this is this is your stuff this is not picasso so they learn together so there's a conflict uh, which comes this adversarial adversarial means something that has some conflict in it right so uh, these architectures are a bit tricky to train they're not that stable in that sense but when they when you manage it you can do really interesting stuff for example this is a uh, this has been a quite quite impact in the recent machine learning uh, let's say community uh, published in March end of March so these faces are totally fake these are totally generated generated by uh, neural networks AI whatever you call so these are not real it's called a boundary equilibrium generator Gen it's one type of generative adversarial networks this is another black magic so image synthesis from text you give the text a small yellow bird with a black crown and a short black pointed beak then it paints it this stack means that uh, there's this hierarchical learning you you get your representations with one architecture and then you apply that representations in another level people who are in deep learning they know but it, it doesn't matter so you give text it paints so this is totally fake like there's no such pictures in reality right so to me this is like very fun stuff think of the possibilities in I don't know film industry gaming industry education whatever so this is uh, this is coming this is here so it's not science fiction anymore then there's this uh, cycle generative adversarial networks so you can have fun stuff like this so this is your input you you change the horse to a zebra or something right then you can apply season transfer so the left column is your input you want your winter picture how would it look like or like generate me something that looks like summer and that's the output so that is unreal that's fake there's no such picture in reality it's totally generated or the other way around this is the spring and then how would the winter look like uh, this was published again in March end of March this year then there's object transfiguration from the same paper so the left is your input you give apples turn it to oranges or wh whatever this is this is really cool stuff right or what is it lemons turn it into apples so if you actually look to these pictures if you zoom in you see patterns still from the lemon so it's not like perfect so there's this uh, artistic part of it right so you see these pores and stuff the texture of the lemon but it actually looks like apples uh, or you can do computational photography stuff so you can uh, play with depth field and enhance photos uh, like those CSI movies <laughs> you know you zoom in zoom in this like infinite resolution <laughs> where the hell is that <laughs> right come on it's uh, maybe it's coming to some extent <laughs> and the other uh, paper this is from uh, end of 2016 so you sketch some you sketch something a product so how would uh, the generative model sort of creates it's again like this is not real photo right it's totally generated but how would it how would that product look 
think of the possibilities in e-commerce. Uh, it's huge. Think of apps. Then there's this second, let's say, family. This is not a, a really strict computer science uh, ontology. This is uh, what's going on nowadays. There's this generative adversarial networks, variational autoencoders, which I'll talk now. And there's this autoregressive models like uh, recurrent neural network stuff. So this variational autoencoders is, it's a really cool idea actually. So instead of uh, learning a function from your input to output, which is like generic classification or regression, right? You have some input to output, you learn an ab arbitrary function. The idea is like, how about learn learn like a probability distribution that represents your data? So it's a probabilistic graphical model, so immediately people in the field know it's like a Bayesian stuff. So it's a bit tricky uh, or like computationally heavy to train. So it, it, they all have advantages and disadvantages, right? There's no free lunch in this field. Uh, but you can do stuff like this. So you can add smile to a face, remove a smile, add eyeglasses, remove eyeglasses. I think there's one app already using these technologies. I, I haven't. I'm bad with those stuff, but th this is here. So think of uh, Photoshop in steroids, <laughs> or like I don't know, movie editor. It's 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 really interesting stuff. Think of the. Okay, you may not like it, but it <laughs> it's irrelevant, right? It's ag agnostic to your liking or not. This is coming. And there's this autoregressive model. This is uh, called pixel RNN, pixel recurrent neural network. So, uh, so for example, you just delete a certain part of po part of the photo, and it sort of completes completes it with as as, be as best as it can, right? With some learned learned data. Then I will move on to the, okay, before that, I already gave lots of image examples, but uh, the main reason is that most of this research is uh, sort of led by image, p image research. Also, it is easier to understand and it's more fun, <laughs> but it's of course applied to these algorithms, uh, applied to uh, machine translation, like natural language processing, so uh, the current, Google Translate is a generative model, so it, you give French, it pukes out Chinese or something, right? It's it's a generative model. Uh, we can generate music with it. The sequential generation, like music, speech, it's it's a bit di more difficult compared to image stuff, but it's coming. So once you combine these things with uh, transfer learning, which I will uh, talk in a minute, you can do really interesting stuff. So in a, f in a few years, I'm expecting uh, you giving uh, a Bon Jovi song and it plays it as a Beatles song or something, right? So, or like you give in Timo Soini's speech and it turns it into a Kalevala, Kalevala style. Or I don't know. So these, these things will be, people are working on it. So. It's it's coming. Then the <laughs> oh no. <laughs> then the second uh, hottest topic I'll talk about is this end-to-end -end training. So I oh, I constantly hear this like uh, chief engineer in Tesla. We trained our self-driving car in an end-to-end -end fashion, and uh, Google comes. Oh, we have this new neural translation model. Uh, it's like it's end-to-end. -end. They expect people uh, go like. Damn, it's end to end. Like, wow, <laughs> these guys are geniuses. In reality, it's more like, what the hell is end to end, right? So, what does it mean? <laughs> At least I ask that. So, end to end meaning that, contrary contrary to this old school way, which is step by step, 
uh, you tune the parameters of the whole system from the rawest data possible, right? So you don't have these uh, five different tasks, five different machine learning models and combine them, assemble them, one does some part and one does that. That's lame, that's like old school, who does that, right? So, for example, let's say handwriting recognition, like cursive writing. So, how we used to do is like, we denoised it with signal processing algorithms, we f like detected lines and we segmented characters and then a machine learning model to recognize characters and then some language model on top of it. Some characters are more likely to come in certain languages after some other characters, some probabilistic stuff. Come on, now this is how it is. You give in data, like this is the handwriting or like some sign, then you train it, your outputs are just string values. Right, so it's end to end, so you don't deal with this sort of stuff. For example, a recent paper from, uh, I don't know who these people work for, maybe maybe in the academy or maybe in top, probably in some top company, but uh, autonomous cars, uh, so basically self-driving cars learned end to end. So what we used to do is, okay, you detect line, sort of how to say, road lines, lanes, right, lanes, uh, pedestrians, objects, so there are different machine learning stuff to detect pedestrians, to to detect sort of uh, the direction of the road, and then you combine, that was the old school way. Now it's just like from pixel values from the camera to the vehicle control, that's the output, so end to end. Okay, this sounds like too good to be true, right? So it has been successful in several cases like uh, audio transcription. What we, what we used to do was like to create these human engineered features, phonemes. English language has, I don't know, 44 or something. Uh, then on top of it, we created language models are all and all that jazz. Now it's, it's becoming end to end. But of course, it has some pros and cons. So pros is like it allows you to focus on the architecture, right? So the model can learn uh, from just back with just back propagation. Then it's it's like it keeps improving, improving itself without expert expert intervention. On the other hand, it requires lots of data. First of all, this is the if you don't have lots of data, forget about it. Then, this is not exactly how we learn. So when you learn a new language, you don't have <laughs> millions of trans exact translations of, of sentences and you look at it. it. It's not like that. And sometimes the, the objective function, we call it cost function, is very difficult, I mean, mathematically or computationally. So there are some technical difficulties, right? Uh, bear with me two more minutes. The last thing I will talk about was transfer learning. That is also a very hot buzzword. So it's a process in which you train a neural network in one domain and then you use that knowledge, learned knowledge, to, to sort of enhance your system in another domain. So you can use it for, for example, you can train a image recognition system on ImageNet, which is more than one million images. It takes lots of time to train, but once you train it, you can use this pre-trained model to perform other tasks such as feature extraction, or you can use the architecture, so how many layers, how like well, all that jazz, because it's sort of, you already know it works. That architecture works. Or you can fine tune it for your task, so you can freeze usually the lower layers, then fine-tune the upper layers. For example, you can train ImageNet, which is like generic object recognition. Is this a bottle? Is this a cat or not? Then using the pre-trained model, you can fine-tune it to biomedical object recognition, right? This is very interesting stuff. These are different domains, but in the end, 
what it learned is images, shapes, colors, and patterns. So it helps other similar domains. Uh, for example, style transfer was was a big hit. So you take a picture in your family vacation and you want AI to paint it in Van Gogh's style. This is, of course, this this uses some pre-trained knowledge of how images, how shapes, contours, colors, edges look like. This is your input image. You want a, your AI to paint it in this style, so that third image is totally fake, totally generated. How is that? Uh, it's really cool, right? <laughs> How is that not cool? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, come on. <laughs> Nobody said anything. I was expecting, hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, true, true. <laughs> Similarly, this is your input image. You want to turn it you want to know how it would be look like in this style, which is a knight, right? So that is generated. That's pretty much it from me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any comments, questions? I'm pleased to answer if I can. The pay tab, the pay tab you mentioned. Yeah, I think so. I don't know honestly because this is like really so new stuff that <laughs> you need like hardcore PhD people to implement it, right? So it's not like any software developer, uh, right? So, so uh, it's it will be. I'm sure it will be coming in uh, movie movie industry or computational photography industry, Photoshop stuff, apps or like softwares. It will be coming. I, m personally, I'm not sort of, but <laughs> this is yes. <laughs> All right. So you told uh, that you've been working on medical data areas. So could you explain more about that? Yeah, this is one project example we have. So we are currently collaborating with uh, largest hospital district in Helsinki in Finland, actually Helsinki University Hospital. They have a super valuable data set of prostate cancer. So they have many, many patients collected throughout the years, which has this pathological, pathological uh, sort of annotation. So ground truth, uh, the score, how aggressive the cancer is, uh, radiologist's opinion, so magnetic resonance images, and we are trying to automate, or of course, uh, it's a clinical decision support system, right? So we are not claiming like doctors go away, uh, but it's a decision support. Hopefully, excel human performance because radiologists are very expensive. So training a radiologist is very expensive. Prostate cancer is very common. Uh, one out of seven men will get it at some time and this is a big thing this will be you will hear from us this just started recently it's a two-year project and we are using deep learning to provide this technology yes <laughs> yes yes Yes, that's the, the question is that in end-to-end -end learning, uh, how, how, can, how can the cost function or the objective function that you are trying to minimize? Okay, first of all, everything you hear from like today, it's a minimization problem, right? You are, you are trying to minimize some, some error function or cost function. And that cost function in some context can be, let's say, ambiguous or mathematically very difficult, difficult meaning that 
it's hard to take the derivatives because gradient based methods they require derivatives right so for example let's say a neural machine translation uh, how good a translation from Chinese to uh, French is I don't know it's a, bi a, b a bit subjective not that much but a bit right so there's this ambiguity in in the cost def really defining the cost function that was what I, I meant by there are some difficulties in certain cases. <laughs>